took it on another level. I didn't even I didn't even think of combining the idea with the health pyramid. When we talk about the pyramid and the Illuminati and the evil eye or the eye that we know on the dollar bill. This particular eye, I, I did I didn't even think about the health pyramid. Because in the Know the Truth series, right, that touches on that pyramid and that particular that particular eye there, that illuminated eye. It was talking about the Illuminati and the great thing about the particular video, it was like a summary video. The Know the Truth series. This this truth has been out there for a while. Even in the vid, I think it has some clips of Alex Jones and and as well as Prodigy and others was reasoning on on the Illuminati and and, and the the eye, but it's it's beginning to get digested. Folks are beginning to um know certain things for real and getting getting over the initial sense of hype. So when you mention the the chart, let's move Africa over here for a moment. All right, let's move Africa over there for a moment. When you mentioned the chart, um, the pyramid food chart, and also understanding it from a Moorish sort of perspective is interesting as well. When you mention the pyramid food chart, and then you think of this other chart that's here, and the pyramid we had pointed out, was not so much an Egyptian, was not so much an Egyptian pyramid, right? When we look at the back of the dollar bill, it's not so much an Egyptian quote pyramid. It's more a Nubian pyramid, and this is what's the key thing. This pyramid is not an Egyptian pyramid, but it's but the angle of the pyramid, the particular angle of the pyramid, is more like Nubia. So when you go to to um, Sudan which was formerly the Anglo the Anglo Egyptian Sudan and it was a condominium and it too like much of the Arab world was set up and was established by um Great Britannia by that lady there that symbolic woman which the the queen is the symbolic head of it when they say they don't know what she does or what's her job description but she does so much work and now they celebrated her bloody, and we do mean her bloody diamond jubilee. It's, it's ironic that they left out bloody. They say it's a curse word. No, it is a curse because of what they have done to get those diamonds and to be celebrating such a so-called diamond jubilee. But that's a whole other aspect, um, which um, Murdered by the Monarchy videos by um, Enigma, the Enigma people with Chris Everett. Those videos are really good check that out, Murdered by the Monarchy, to get a little more background on what's really behind the so-called English or the modern whitewash British, and we do mean whitewash British crown. So we have this eye here. Now this eye, and now more people are beginning to recognize, and in that video, Know the Truth, they're telling you that this eye, right, this eye is a left eye. It's a left eye. Because we was looking at it on the, on the close-up. You know, this particular dollar here, if you look at it under the close-up, the more close-up um, uh, stills and everything of the dollar, and you look at that eye, you know, I don't know about you, but I ask myself, is it a left eye or is it a right eye? You know, is it a left eye or is it a right? People just look at it as an eye. But it's, it's, it's an eye. And if you look closely it's a particular, it's either the left or the right eye. Now, this book right here that I'm holding in my hand is Egyptian Yoga, The Philosophy of Enlightenment by Muata Ashby. Very interesting, very good book. I don't hear too many people talking about this book, even in the Egyptology circles, but it's a really, really good book, well-written book, written by this brother, as well as his wife. You understand? Um, Egyptian Yoga, Muata Muata Ashby. Now, in this particular book, he's breaking it more down as the science, comparing the science, actually showing us how all these other um, religions come out of um, Egypt and therefore out of Africa. Now, there's a particular portion in here where he touches on the eye, like the so-called Egyptian eye. Now, most of the people who are following it from the Illuminati, remember, that's another version of the whitewash. 
That means that they took ancient knowledge, like Prometheus, this new movie coming out, Prometheus, similar to Icarus, is where they stole fire from the gods. But these gods were not so-called extraterrestrial like they make you believe. They were ETs, but they were Ethiopians. They were ancient Ethiopians or ancient black people. And these ancient black people or Ethiopians, we can say, were what they would call extraterrestrials. But they were not extraterrestrials in the movie-making Hollywood sense of it. You understand? Within that make-believe, and that's their European imagination. So they continue to imagine it, like even that whole angel thing. So if you go back to the Middle Ages and the, the Renaissance painting, you see these pudgy, fat, white boys or babies or these effeminate men, and they call them angels. That was their imagination at that particular time based on what they knew. This is now how they saw these images and they projected this particular image, which overall is the image of the beast because not from true God, mind, or according to the true knowledge and application, the true apps of this. So anyway, if you look at this page right here, this is page 38. I want you to check this out. I did another vid where I put this particular chart in there. Let's get a little closer. You can see where everything, basically all these different spiritualities and disciplines, they all come out of Egypt, therefore out of Africa, originally out of Ethiopia. They come out of the Tobe, out of Tobia, right? So this shows how all these particular different religions, philosophies, uh, disciplines, um, Eastern religions, and they also come into the Western sense or the European, the modern European sense, and they all come from Egypt, or originally from Tobia, or from Ethiopia, and he shows this on this chart right here, where you see the so-called Tao, the Tao, or the Tao, the Tao, Tao, right there, coming from Ethiopia, like Osar and Osset, going to Egypt, and from there, spreading out to the rest of the world. Now, how does that connect with the I? How does that connect with the EA, the Oin? what they call the oin. How does that connect with the oin? That's a very interesting question because it brings us forward again to this particular, this particular Nubian pyramid. Now, the particular angle is different than the Egyptian pyramid. So if you look at it, if you measure, you see, if you measure, and the vid, Know the Truth, um, the Know the Truth video that we saw, um, it's interesting because in the beginning it breaks down symbols. It breaks down what the symbols mean, how our symbols use, whether it's predictive. You know, there's like two particular manners that it's used in. One is kind of a predictive programming. You understand? Predictive, where people see it, it's predictive programming. The other one is more like subliminal in some subliminal senses. But check out the video for yourself because we want to go forward and reveal that part, the half of that story that has not been revealed concerning this I, this I, and then also showing how some of the celebrities are doing this particular symbol right here, which they say is the eye of Horus, or they're doing this particular symbol right there, which it says 366, you know, um, so forth. And it is an application and a certain, at the level is able to be received, as Christ said, at the level that's able to be Kabbalah, at a particular level is able, able to be received. Now, we're just looking up some stuff on um, charts, food and health charts, and we start to look at really the fullness of the tripartite being their spirit, soul, and body, or the organic. And this man was made in the image of the true God. The true God is the triune God, or the Seleus Kedus, you know what I'm saying? Or God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And now being made in that tripartite image, we also bear that image of God in our spirit, our soul, and our body. Thessalonians in the Bible points that out, that the early Christians, the true Nazarites, or that sect of the Nazarenes, they were well familiar with that. And it goes all the way back to the to the, the, the wisdom of the Egypts that Moses, according to Acts of the Apostles, chapter 7, verse 22, was familiar with. So that's the connection here with Egypt. But we have to understand that there's a European way of viewing Egypt, right? And there's also the Afro and even by extension Asian way of viewing Egypt. 
and a lot of this has gotten confused. A lot of this has gotten just just all pulled, cobbled together, and it's purposeful in that because that is now the the revelation of Babylon, which has come out of this confusion. You shall know the truth, but you have to come out of this confusion by taking on the knowledge of the truth and acting on that because faith without works is dead. And Christ teaches us in John 6 and 29, the work of God is to believe or to admit as true the one whom he has sent. They say they believe in Jesus, but they don't believe or accept his humanity and his humanity is the woolly here, the blackness that the scriptures, that the catacombs actually points out. Instead, most folks are caught up, as we point out this exposed video right here, on, who is this? Caesar Borgia. They're taking Caesar. Remember, they said they have no king but Caesar. Remember when Christ was crucified, they said they have no king but Caesar. Eventually, they would whitewash the image which is to say to deny the humanity of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ by making him a European. You understand? By making him whitewashing that particular image. And that in itself is the major deception which says that the serpent has deceived the whole world or the whole seclorum, the whole alem or in Hebrew olam. All right? Now, in moving this particular part forward, Let's deal with health. And this is the point I was making a little bit earlier. I said, let me just get into this recording, record it for those who are here on hand, you understand, as well as those of you all elsewhere, you understand, wherever you may be, so that we will all be on the same um, proverbial page with this, because this all connects with it. Now, the eye. So let's deal with this eye. So we learned that this pyramid, they say, quote, that it is Egyptian. Remember, the root of Egypt is actually Ethiopia, right? Ancient Ethiopia, which some say, and we have evidence of Tobia, in a sense, so we'll call it um, Tobia, right? And this equals Tobia. Now, To in Hebrew, right, means good, right? The good land, right? The good, and that's very important because the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, this is the very confusion that manifested itself in the latter days in Ethiopia, Armageddon 1974, that they ate of that forbidden tree of the knowledge of good and evil and were cast out of that garden, and thus Imperial Ethiopia or Holy Ethiopia was destroyed or was forsaken by that careless generation of Ethiopians. So here's also that connection with um, uh, Zephaniah or Zechariah, was it 2 and, and 12, where it speaks of the Ethiopians shall be slain by my sword. By the, the sword of God is the word of God. And so that's why we don't have to worry too much about the careless if we stay in the word of God and preach that word in this valley of the dry bones. So that these bones, the bones that are able to and willing to, will gather flesh again and will come out of this skull and bones. The answer to the whole skull and bones thing for the lost sheep is right there in the book of Ezekiel. And look up the valley of the dry bones and make that connection between this whole skull and bones thing, everybody wearing this particular um, um, X and O or O and X symbol. You know, back in Tic Tac, the circle is the head and the X underneath is the bones, all right? So... Actually, this particular pyramid, the angle tells us that it's really Nubian. So what we're going to put here is another colony, Nub. Now they say the land of Nub or Nob is where the gold came from. The gold. You understand? The gold came from Nub or from Nubia. Right? But the angle of the pyramid, first of all, that pyramid on the back of the dollar, that pyramid right here, if you study the angle, the angle is not Egyptian, it's Nubian. It looks like the Nubian pyramids. Exactly. Even some of the Nubian pyramids don't have that top, and they kind of end right here. So you begin to think like, hey, wait, what's going on? You understand? So if you look at the symbology, you can see the symbology was stolen. But now get this. The Roman Empire, the Roman European Empire, only conquered as far as Egypt, but never conquered Nubia. Therefore, they never conquered. This is why we say Ethiopia was never conquered or colonized. They were able to colonize 
Egypt. And this is why we have the confusion with folks about whether the Egyptians are black or white or whether it's really it's in Africa, but they put it as European, so anybody from there is considered white or Caucasian and not and not African because they brought in a whole new population of people, and that's why the people there don't look like the artifacts, don't look like the monuments, so forth and so on. So what they do is fake a lot of this um, um, artwork and, and for the tourists and so forth and so on. So it's interesting what is going on recently with Egypt and how that affects the whole tourism business. We're coming to a time of a new age, you know what I'm saying? So a lot of those things are done, you understand? So anyway, be that as it may, so let's look at this eye. So what about this eye right here? This eye, right, this, this eye on the, on the back of the dollar, right, is um, oftentimes pictured. Notice what they do. They, they, they show you two different eyes, right? They show you two different eyes. I think we need to show you the eye. So let's just put that this is the eye, E-Y-E. -E. In Hebrew, it is called ayin, right, A Y. I N or A Y N in the sense oin. You understand? Or A I N oin. You understand? So there's different ways. Let's just put some of the different ways this can be spelled. You understand? And you can spell it like this. You understand? Oin. And it means he it, it means I in all the Afro Shemitic languages. That means in biblical Hebrew, right? In Ethiopic, in Royal and the pure language in the Royal Amharic, it all means I and in the and the in the Seretic or the the Eastern um, Shemitic as well as the Western Shemitic like Ethiopic right so it means I I I I Kabbalistically this is also very important so this symbol is the I most people say well it, it must be the third eye but actually according to the Illuminati which is the European version of it. You know, once a European, it's like hip-hop. It's like what's going on with music. You see how they, after a while, they take it over, you know what I'm saying, and they remake it and they introduce their own psychology, philosophy, culture, and other ideas they superimpose into this medium, this art form, this religion, this idea that they take over. So when we talk about Rome, the Roman Empire, originally the Roman, um, many of the, the, the Christian emperors, of Rome were black people, were Ethiopian African people, because Christianity was all throughout North Africa and, 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 and East Africa and other places in Africa and Arabia as well, until the rise of the serpent or of, of Rome, you understand, and the Roman church and the whitewash. So there's these two seeds that we read about in, 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 in Genesis, the seed of the, of the serpent versus the seed of the woman. You understand? Know Two races. Now, one level of the manifestation is the whole black-white thing. But the higher level of the manifestation is the good-evil thing, the sons of light, the children of light, the true children of light. But it says in the scripture that Satan, it should not you know, be no wonder that he transformed himself. I think it's Corinthians. He transformed himself to be an angel of light. So that should not, you know, that should not... We should be warned about that. So, therefore, the whole idea of the Illuminati, this, this enlightened eye, right, should also now connect from a biblical, and we're, and we're touching on the scientific, the historical, the mythological, from all the different disciplines, because all these are just different, different um, parts, different degrees on the cipher, on the circle of gaining a 360-degree um, knowledge of it, which is very, very basic. This is my people perish because of a lack of knowledge, you understand, because of a lack of gnosis, of knowing the truth. So you get caught up in a lie. So this I right here is also in the Bible. So let's go to our notes right here so we can connect it with this point. We say that this I, this particular I, Scripturally, it's sealed up, revealed in Zechariah 5 and 6. And we did a couple of videos on this, but, you know, we said, wow, folks are not really getting it, are they? You understand know that this particular eye, right, this particular eye that we have right here, and let's make a, make a larger demonstration of it. Now, most places, how it's used, they usually use it from a... a a point of view, something like this, right? They usually do something like this. They usually show you the left eye. 
something similar to this. They show you a left eye. Although when they show you the archaeology, they show you a right eye. So there's the right and the left eye. But this, as we say, is the left eye, right, the left eye. Now, why is this important? This is the left eye. Now, some of you all think about that, that, um, that, that black girl singer and stuff, um, you know, Lopez and so forth and so on. That's interesting, too. I'll let you all follow up on that if you want to. You understand if you need to. But that, because that's a ladder. That's a ladder aberration or manifestation of it. It, it. It's not always faithful. See, what they do a lot of times is they reverse engineer. There's an awful problem in reverse engineering things. Well, what else can they do? They can only reverse engineer it to really discover, well, what it's about, how was it really used, so forth and so on. But when you try to reverse engineer something, you always are not going to get to the real origin the right way. Other things you other things you are creating by your backward, your retrograde motion. Of course, they say that's the only way they can figure out how things are used or how they were used, and in that sense, they're correct. You, you understand? But that also demonstrates that they are not the people, that this is not theirs, even though they, they, they covet. The unfortunate thing that the European, the Gentiles, the Goyim, have shown such a covetousness, and they have deceived and taught the world this very same covetousness. That's why all this connects so to connect with this talisman, you understand, this $1 bill. Remember, they changed every denomination except the $1 bill. Now, some would say, oh, but they're going to change it now because you, to you told them about it. Well, they might, but it's very difficult because this is a, a, still a very powerful talisman. This is a talisman. This is a talisman. This is magic. This is witchcraft. But it has become necessary magic and witchcraft because of people's belief, because of their faith. They may not call it a religion, but it is a religion. It has all the religious elements. You understand the symbology, God's name, or it says in God we trust and everything. And it's highly valued. It's worship. It's called the almighty dollar. You see, so its strength really is not in itself. Its strength is from our so-called false or superstitious belief in it. The unconscious part of the belief, as the scripture says in Timothy, it says, for the love of money is the root of all evil. And people gladly, willingly, often admit that they love this thing more than anything else, and they would sacrifice mama, papa, sister, brother, whoever, for this false god right here. So what's up with that? Could the Bible not even give us a little more detail on it? Well, yes, the scriptures has given us a lot more detail on it, but people are lost in translation. Now, what's interesting is that it's the right eye is the eye, right? The, the right eye of Horus is also, they say, the eye of Ra. And the eye of Ra is also Hathor in her fiery, destructive aspects. But it's interesting because we have the parts of the eye. You know what I'm saying? The eye is often called the eye or one of the eyes. Right here, we got it down here, one of the eyes. You see it right there? One of the eyes. And it gives an like explanation there, right? And then also over here. But now notice, the Quran purports um, the Islamic expositors, they say that the Quran and Muhammad's teaching says that he, he revealed something that no one else knew, that um, the Antichrist, the Dajala, right, the Hasawe Masih, you understand that he has one eye, right? He has one eye. He has a left eye, and he's blind in his right eye. He has a left eye. Some interpret that as the material side, the lower degrees, and the right eye is the true spiritual eye. So he's spiritually blind if you interpret it metaphysically. But look, in Egypt, there wasn't just one eye. You know what I'm saying? There wasn't just one eye. Now, this is India. And you see how when it comes out of Africa, you understand, it comes out of Africa, and the whole world learns and, and, te and is taught from Africa. That's the real true origin. You know, they try to say that ancient Egypt, it was some Asian, some mysterious people came there and built the civilization and went back to Asia and stuff like that. But, you know, all that is a folly because they wanted to derive an origin from their so-called um, Indo-Aryan and, and Hindi and Indian. And that's what the caste system and, uh, once again, the racism is all connected with that. So the legend says that when, when um, Horus 
was was resisting and fighting the killer of his father, his uncle, the bad uncle, right? Is that something that's the bad uncle thing? Even in this society, it becomes a genre almost. Anyway, the bad uncle, right? And the bad uncle was suit. Some say suit, typhoon, or, or seti, or shape. You understand? And that name is interesting because the name also in a Hebraic sense is spoken of the children of shape or to them suit of Seth or suit. But this Seth is not the Seth, is not your Seth or our Seth of the Bible because there's more than one person often used, uh, uh, had a similar name. Even in the New Testament, there's Bar Jesus. There's Bar Jesus. And he was, he was a cultist, he was a sorcerer. You understand? He was a deceiver. So we can even say that Christianity, European Christianity, had adopted and followed in the way of Bar Jesus, but not Yeshua HaMoshiach, not Yeshua of Nazareth. I mean, it's very clear to see because Bar Jesus was a sorcerer. He has a similar sort of name. And then when you take the word Bar, it's also Baal. In other words, the R, the R. In some languages, it's pronounced as an L, and L the R. If you ever listen to some Asians, they will say, like, I love you, I love you, I love you. It's an R. It's not I love, that list, that thing in their tongue. So the word bar can also be said, ball, ball, like ball, ball.